on behalf of Edith and the family and the extended family of the University of Texas and its athletics department, welcome today's, to today's memorial service celebrating the life of Daryl Royal. Thank you very much for being here and for the thousands of acts of kindness and love which you have shown. This is a day we knew would come, and yet we are never prepared for it. In the book, Tuesdays with Maury, the author Mitch Albom spend, spends each Tuesday with his old professor whom he hadn't seen in 16 years. The man is dying of ALS. It is the next to last Tuesday of his life. He asked to see the hibiscus plant on the ledge behind him. I cupped it in my hand and held it up near his eyes. He smiled. It's natural to die, he said again. The fact that we make such a big hullabaloo over it is all because we don't see ourselves as part of nature. We think because we're human, we're something above nature. He smiled at the plant. We're not. Everything that gets born dies. He looked at me. Do you accept that? Yes. All right, he whispered. Now here's the payoff. Here is how we are different from these wonderful plants and animals. As long as we can love each other and remember the feeling of love we had, we can die without ever really going away. All the love you have created is still there. All the memories are still there. You live on in the hearts of everyone you have touched and nurtured while you were here. His voice was raspy, which usually meant he needed to stop for a while. I placed the plant back on the ledge and went to shut off the tape recorder. This is the last sentence Maury got out before I did. Death ends a life, not a relationship. More than anything, Darrell Royal was about relationships. When Texas Memorial Stadium was renamed to include Coach Royal's name, his good friend, ABC announcer Keith Jackson, spoke at a gala held in Coach's honor. And he told the simple story of a distant pond where the waters were calm and placid. He told us to imagine tossing a large pebble into the center of the pond, and he encouraged us to watch as the ripples began, tied at first, but growing and multiplying as they stirred the still water, growing and reaching until they touched the shore in every direction. That is the story of Darrell Royal. It is the story of a young man who learned in the hard times that character and integrity were the only things you really had that no one could take away from you. And it is the story of a man whose victories on a playing field thrilled millions and set a standard. He was a hero at a time when America needed heroes. But even with all the success, he lived by a simple creed, what I gave, I have, what I kept, I lost. He told me once that the mark of a man is how he treats people who can never do anything for him. It doesn't matter whether you were a president or a stadium worker, he had a way of making you feel important. You see, Coach Royal understood that all of this was never about him, and it wasn't about all of the victories and the championships. He loved the game, not only for the competition, and he was a fierce competitor, but because it taught the lessons of life. It was about character. It was about integrity. A coach, in the truest sense of the word, is a teacher. And the teacher will be measured not by what he or she knows, but by what their students have learned. We are the pages of his playbook. We are the players in his story. And that is why we remember, grieve, and celebrate all at the same time. We will miss his gentlemanly presence, the twinkle in the bright blue eyes, and the quick wit that even a ravaging disease could not ever conquer. We are left to celebrate, and we celebrate not only what he did, 
but who he was. Coach Royal made history in the field of college athletics, and he cast a shadow across this great state and far beyond. He parlayed his love of football, golf, and country music to make a difference in thousands of lives. Most of all, he made history in our hearts. And it is in that space where memories and dreams do live forever and where character and integrity define not only the heart, but the soul. And now for our opening prayer, here is Reverend Amy Isbell Hanchen, Associate Pastor for Congregational Care at Westlake Hills Presbyterian Church. Let us pray. Eternal God, your love for us is everlasting. You alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning light. Help us to turn to you with believing hearts and trust in your word that tells us that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come shall ever be able to separate us from your love. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight, some sure sign of your kingdom, and when our vision fails, to trust your love, which never fails. O oh God of grace, you have given us a new and living hope. We thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, he opened the way to eternal life. Help us to know that because Christ lives, we also shall live, and that Daryl, our brother in Christ, lives even now in the light of your kingdom. We give you thanks and praise that Daryl has been released from disease and is made completely whole. God of comfort, we ask for your presence in this hour, for people everywhere who are mourning the loss of coach. Be near to each one. Especially we ask that you would hold Edith and her family in tender closeness to you. May all our words and actions here in the Irwin Center today be agents of your comfort and bring glory to you as we celebrate the life of Daryl K. Royal. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Over the years, there was no vocal group that meant more to Coach Royal when it came to gospel sounds than the Kyle sisters. Today, they are here to fulfill a promise they made to Coach. At lunch recently, he asked them to sing for him when this time came, and he requested that they sing the gospel classic, The Old Rugged Cross. But he had one change in the lyrics. As we know the words to the song, it goes, I will cling to the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. It was important and is important to understand that he wanted the song to say, till my burdens at last I laid down. I think Reverend Henshin defined it. It was important to him to say that the trophies don't matter that to put away the burdens was his quest. It is telling, it is meaningful, and with that, here are the very special ladies, Mary Margaret, Francis Ann, and Bodie, the Kyle sisters with the old rugged cross. Till my burdens 
Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the University of Texas at Austin, Bill Powers. Edith, today I bring you words from the entire University of Texas family. God bless you. Godspeed. What a life Coach led, and what an example he set, both for the boys he turned into men and for the rest of the University of Texas. Darrell Royal was that rarest of creatures, an Oklahoma Sooner who brought unprecedented glory and national attention to the University of Texas. A great coach, yes, of course. But even more, he was an inspiring man and an inspiring leader. I've received notes from all across the country, from people who just wanted to tell me the impact Coach had on their lives. One was from a man in Brooklyn who never came to UT, but who 50 or so years ago, with his eight-year-old brother, adopted UT as his team. And he wrote me that he did it solely because of the admiration he had for Darrell Royal. From insisting that our colors are not just orange and white, but burn orange and white, to putting the Longhorn silhouette on our helmets. He was the real creator of the Longhorn brand that defines our institution around the world today. And he defined it with character and with integrity. And Edith, you were there at every step, supporting him, of course, but also making your own distinct contributions to our community. Edith, we love you. This campus is always your home. Coach, thank you. We miss you. The tower will glow orange once again for you tonight. And the eyes of Texas will always be upon you. To speak on behalf of his players, he was a former Longhorn who provided steadfast and dedicated support to Coach Royal during his final years, Marvin Bindley. Coach's players are here today because they love Coach Royal. We have a letterman's party once a year. Coach and Edith always attend. Once when I was there, I pulled Coach Royal aside and asked, why does Edith come to events like this? There's nobody here except old football players. And it didn't take Coach long to comment. He said there is no place Edith would rather be than right here. She loves you guys. And Edith, we love you, and, and thank you for sharing your husband with us. We had some players write down their special memories, and uh, I have a few of them right here. 
Bobby Lackey was here when Coach Royal was hired, and he remembers the first team meeting with the new coach. And he could tell right quick that there were going to be some big changes for Texas football. Earl Campbell said he would always be indebted to Coach Royal. Coach promised Earl and his mother that he would get a college degree and become the best athlete he could be. Earl said Coach was honest and always kept his word. He taught him how to play golf and he taught him how to be a man. Earl said that Coach saved his life and that the Royals were like a mom and dad to him. When Don Talbert and Ed Padgett were brand new and on the freshman team, they were in the locker room. They asked a very young looking 32 year old what position he was playing on the depth chart. Darrell's reply was, they have me down as the new head football coach <laughs> and I hope I can make this team. Corby Robertson said, Coach could pack more meaning in fewer words than anybody I've ever known. Charlie Talbert's 1963 team was in a hotel in Dallas getting ready to play Oklahoma when Coach recognized a street person from his old hometown of Hollis, Oklahoma. Coach invited that person to join the team in the hotel on the sideline and in the locker room. Pat Culpepper was on a recruiting trip in Amarillo the first time, this was long ago, the first time he heard Coach Royal say, it's how you treat the people who can't help you that counts. When Scott Palmer arrived home after his dad's funeral, there was a very thoughtful voicemail from Coach to say he was sorry about his father's passing. Bill Zappalak also mentioned Coach's kindness and interest in each player. When he and his son ran into Coach Royal and Coach Mike Campbell one day in 1994, Bill's son was in high school and he was in the high school football playoffs. They saw Coach Royal and he already knew about the team and already knew about the playoffs and he wished him success in the next game. When Johnny Johnson was a shy high school football recruit from LaGrange, Texas, Coach Royal called him aside to say, Johnny, the next time you greet someone like me, do by looking directly in their eye and shake their hand firmly. It was at that moment that I decided the University of Texas was for me because Coach Royal cared not only for me as an athlete, but as a person. Tommy Isbell said, Coach, I never heard you talk about your faith. Coach replied, Tommy, have you ever heard me sing? And Tommy, Tommy thought about it and he said, no, I don't think I have. Coach said, well, that doesn't mean I don't like music. <laughs> Spanky Stevens writes, Coach was an enlightened, blessed soul that fulfilled his destiny in helping others see their own potential in life. Most of you know the Royals through football, music, or golf. Linda and I had the privilege of going to the same church as the Royals. Coach was at church every Sunday until he was no longer able to come. They both loved the Lord. In Matthew 25, Jesus Christ said, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and share your master's happiness.
It's hard to believe, but when Coach Royal first came to Texas in 1957, he had a fear of public speaking. To help him, a good friend who was a preacher in Oklahoma City sent him a poem to learn to read. If he could gain confidence reading the poem, the preacher figured, he could gain confidence as a speaker. The poem was about an old man who was on a journey. For the 1998 award-winning video, The Story of Darrell Royal, we got coached to recite the poem. Today, the Longhorn Network has put together a montage that reminds us that the irony of the poem was that the poem would not only change his life, it would define his life. An old man traveling a lone highway came at evening cold and gray to a chasm that was vast, deep, and wide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim, for the sullen stream held no fears for him. But he turned when he reached the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day and you never again must pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build you this bridge at eventide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, and the path I have come, he said. There follows after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This stream, which has been as naught to me, to that fair-haired youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him.